Hi friends, I am Nidhik Paul. Today we are discussing about the viscosity and uh, the physical chemistry experiments. And uh, viscosity, what is viscosity? In order to consider viscosity, we can consider the example of opening a water tap. If you are opening the tap very slowly, initially we will see that the flow is very uh, continuous. And if you are completely open the tap and the, if the tank is full, then at that time the flow is very fast. And these two flows, we can uh, have two different terms there. Uh, first one is called streamline or laminar flow. The slow and continuous initial flow is called streamline or laminar flow. And the second one is called turbulent flow. And in the case of viscosity, we are considering the streamline or laminar flow of li liquid. And we can consider the flowing liquid. In the case of streamline or laminar flow, we can consider the flowing liquid as different layers of molecules. Or it can be considered as a pack of cards. And you are placing a pack of card on a table and you are pressing on the top one. What will happen? The the one attached to your palm will move faster and the remaining uh, consecutive layers will be slower and slower and the one attached to the table directly attached to the table will not move. Similarly, liquid flowing liquid can be considered as uh, different layers of liquids or different layers of molecules and the initial layer will be attached to the surface. The first layer will be attached to the surface and usually it won't move and the next layer will be will will start moving but some resistance will be there because of intermolecular attraction between the particles the particles in one layer or the molecules in one layer will resist the movement of the next layer so some attractive force will happen so the next layer will be resisted in its movement and as the, as the distance from the surface increases, the consecutive layers will move faster and faster because the resistance will, the, this layer will resist to this one, but it is moving and the next layer will get a somewhat better movement. So similarly, each layer will move faster and faster. And this, and the this is actually this this uh, reluctant to flow of each layer is uh, due to the intermolecular intermolecular attraction between particles. And otherwise, we can call it as internal friction. Internal friction. One layer is uh, the movement of one layer is resisted by the friction of another layer. And the friction the reason for the friction is attraction between molecules. Either it may be some hydrogen bonding or waterworks interaction, such interactions there. And, and, and that property, that reluctant to flow is called viscosity of a liquid. Then, the unit of viscosity in CGS system is poise and in SI system it is Pascal second. Now we can consider the movement of liquid in a capillary tube or a narrow tube. And the equation for that one is coefficient of viscosity eta. It is given, it is actually eta, it is given by Poiseuille's equation as pi p r raised to 4 t by 8 b l. And here t is the time of flow, r is the radius of that particular, uh, that uh, narrow tube, especially capillary tube, and p is the draining force or the pressure exerted on that one. That is actually the uh, because of the liquid column above that capillary tube that is started to flow through that capillary tube and that p value can be replaced as h d g d is density h height of liquid column and v is the volume of liquid flowing and at a particular moment v is the volume of flow and l is the length of capillary tube this is Poiseuille's equation and uh, we can consider Ostwald viscometer. This is an instrument for or this is the uh, glass setup for determining the viscosity. 
and unknown count positions of mixtures first word viscometer and here we can consider if you are in this Poiseuille situation we can have L the, this is the capillary tube portion this is the L length of capillary tube and the capillary tube inner radius there then here we will allow liquid to be taken and let it be flow then when liquid is taken here there is actually the driving force that is actually HDG then now we can consider the determination or relative how we can determine the relative viscosity eta of a liquid so for that one we can take one liquid here uh, suppose 20 ml of that liquid is filtered to this this uh, glass bulb and then allow it to we will can suck it to this bulb then it is similar to the uh, paper here one mark is there and when liquid is coming here you just uh, release your thumb so it will start moving through that it will start flowing through this capillary tube so we will get for that first liquid we will get a time of flow and we can calculate the density of that one density is mass by volume so particular volume is taken and measuring the mass of that one you will get a mass by volume density value so T and D values we will obtain so we will get a T and D value for a first liquid eta 1 and if you are then now we can remove that first liquid from that one then we can pour the second liquid through, through, through this portion then set the second liquid here allow it to flow through this capillary tube when the liquid started flowing from here it is full of liquid started flowing here the level will uh, decrease decrease and uh, at a particular point when it is started closing this means the entire liquid is flowing through that one and when the last drop crossing this mark we can stop our stopwatch there or uh, time measurement system we can stop there and we can uh, call, uh, measure that second liquids time of flow and second liquids density as we use the same instrument for this purpose and the same volume we are allowing to flow through this one the only difference here is the pi value is constant r value is constant then height of liquid column that is also constant height of liquid column is constant then acceleration due to gravity that is fixed because Thus, two liquids we use the same instrument to run the two liquids so volume is fixed length is fixed so only changing quantity is eta is proportional to d and t these are the changing quantities so eta 1 is proportion to t1 d1 and eta 2 for the liquid the second liquid is also proportional to t2 d2 so eta 1 by eta 2 equal to t1 d1 by T2 D2. So usually eta 1 we can consider as water. So eta 1 for water. So time of flow and density for water. So you can put all these values here and eta 2 is the unknown quantity there. Or viscosity of the second liquid is the unknown quantity. And this viscosity we determined relative to water. So it is relative viscosity of this liquid so we can calculate the relative viscosity of a liquid by this viscometry method now we, we can we know we can check how we can calculate or how we can measure the concentration of a liquid solution especially binary liquid solution suppose you are provided with glycerol unknown glycerol solution how you will uh, determine the viscosity of that liquid glycerol solution here also the same equation will help us in determining that one so now we can have a unknown glycerol solution is there then we should prepare different known solutions known concentrations of solutions of glycerol so for that one suppose you are, if you are pipetting or transferring from a burette 
15 ml of glycerol to 50 ml standard flask we are making the volume 50 ml so remaining 35 ml water 15 ml glycerol is taken 35 ml water in a standard flask so total 50 ml standard flask so percentage of glycerol is total it is 50 ml so to 100 ml it is the double of this one so it is actually 30 percentage solution so it is a non concentration then next one another standard flask we can transfer to only so it is 30 so you will get to 40 percentage solution so 30 20 so you will get 60 percent solution so 35 15 so you will get 70 percent solution similarly you can have 40 10 so it will be 80 percent solution so different the concentrations of non concentration this is non concentration of glycerol solutions there then another one is unknown this is actually unknown concentration given to you that is also totally 50 ml there so it is not known so how we can determine that one so for that one the first solution you should take from that one 20 ml we can pick at two totally it is 50 ml is there so 20 ml of the 30 percentage solution 20 ml is transferred to this viscometer to this bulb suck it to this point and like a pipetting it is similar to pipetting solution is there you just similar to pipetting you suck it here so solution will come here so the glass this bulb is full of liquid then we just release that one release your thumb so it will start flowing so at that time time of flow you will get time of flow for that particular liquid so let it be 100 second time of flow you will get then next the same solution we should determine the density density because eta is proportional to density at a time so time we should determine along with the density so density of that particular solution that is glycerol solution so some density value will be there so you will get a density value here d1 value It is usually one more, some higher value than one. One, then next solution, the same second solution, non concentration. You should prepare twenty ml to that one. Repeat the process. First one you should remove. Then second solution you should transfer. Second here, allow it to flow from this point to this point. You just allow it to flow when the last drop crossing this point, this mark, this mark. We should. Measure the time for that flow. So that is actually next time of flow. So it will be one ten second. Another value. As the concentration of glycerol increases, more and more density will be there. The flow rate will be will also increase. So usually it should increase. So another density value there. So similarly you will get different values. Next point is T D. You should determine the T and D values here. then similarly we can determine the flow rate for or flow t and td value for unknown concentration unknown concentration is given there you just prepare 20 ml here allow it to taken here then allow it to flow that one here also you will get td value so now you are having composition percentage composition and td value with the u so how you can uh, then you should td dt or td td now we can plot a graph between td along the y axis and the composition along x axis composition along x axis so you will get a straight line here you will get a straight line for this one because as the composition or percentage of glycerol increases the time taken for the flow increases density of the solution also will increase so usually you will get a proportionate it will be proportionate so you will get a straight line 
then the unknown concentration having TD value there that is not for you or experimentally determine the quantity so that suppose that TD values you are getting here then you plot here so here corresponding you will get a percentage this is actually the composition of unknown solution given to you now we can go to go to the experimental uh, setup for the instrument or instrumental setup.